Hey everybody, this is our third video on the new vCloud Director Cross VDC networking functionality. Uh, we're going to be uh, working on uh, adding egress points to a already created uh, data center group and talking through how this actually works uh, within VCD and then in the back end how it works with vCloud uh, with uh, NSX. So I have uh, two environments as I've shown in the past videos um, and we also have two organizations, Daniel and Wasam. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, part of the use case and Wasam's gonna talk about this shortly is we can, uh, with cross VDC networking, we can actually load balance traffic or pick an explicit path for where we wanna actually egress traffic between a data center group. So Wasam, you wanna talk about that, um, what we've done in our environment? Sure. So basically, in a production environment, a cloud provider environment, you have data centers and you have resources running on those data centers. Typically, you would have either resources sitting on a DR site, maybe um, you're paying for these um, equipment, but they're, they're just, you know, standby uh, until a disaster happens. However, with, with our design and with um, uh, the VCD cross VC networking, we will be able to leverage the uh, standby sites and use them and utilize them to be also active. So we will have an active site, maybe for ten uh, uh, active uh, site uh, on site A, for example, for tenant X, while we will have site B active for tenant Y. And the standby will be vice versa. So in this case, we are uh, utilizing our resources, load balancing on our resources, and uh, also from a, a traffic, uh, networking traffic throughput uh, utilization also. That's right. So with your organization, we actually pick the active path as region A. And then what we're going to do with uh, my organization under Daniel, we're going to use region B as my egress point. So to add in egress point, um, what we actually do is within the data center group, we're going to add the egress point. From this wizard, it's gonna act, um, ask us, what do we wanna set as or establish as our active egress point? Well, uh, we know that we wanna actually explicitly call out um, our traffic and egress through region B because Wasam is using region A as the active egress point. And we'll go ahead and click add. That's it. Um, what we're gonna now talk about in Abinov is also gonna talk about what happens on the back end. Um, for those of you that have experienced cross vCenter NSX, there's a lot of uh, inner workings on that. So let's go ahead and actually, we can see some tasks kicking off here. It's creating that uh, universal uh, egress point and actually deploying the control VM, uh, UDLR control VM. Let's hop over to the administrator, the provider view, of NSX and see what's actually happening. And Abby, do you want to kind of talk through what's happening on the back end here? Sure. So basically, an egress point is essentially an org VDC edge gateway and it's used for north and southbound traffic. And so what's happening here is that basically we are first um, deploying a control VM for the appropriate routing if necessary. And then next what we're doing is we're essentially creating a transit network between the edge gateway and the universal uh, distributed logical router. And then finally, um, in order to actually have routing, we need to basically set you know, route, routes on our edge gateway and our UDLR. So you'll notice that if you go to the um, edge gateway, you'll see routes with, um, with BGP routes with, with the weights appropriately set. An active, stand, an active egress point will have a weight of 60, while a standby egress point would have a weight of 30. And so the ratio of these weights allows us to really have the traffic flow in the correct way. If an active egress point goes down, for example, then um, the standby egress point will kick in and routes will start flowing through the standby egress point. Great, so let's see what the status is. And it looks like it's completed. Great, we have an active egress point, um, which is going through my edge on uh, site B or my uh, B org VDC. So we can now see, um, we should be able to see our new universal wire. Um, and this is actually that egress point associated with that. And if we actually go to edges, I should be able to actually see we go to secondary. 
I see my edge here. And if we take a guess, I believe this would be our universal uh, logical router that was created. We'll go under interfaces. And it is. So we can see that this is on that transit network that was automatically created by VCOD director in this internal interface. And then from a routing perspective, as um, Abhinav alluded to, we are setting up BGP configuration for that. All right. Uh, yeah, go ahead. One thing to mention is that it's all IBGP that's being done here. So the AS numbers and everything are uh, that are being used are all explicitly for internal BGP. So you don't have to worry about BGP numbers conflicting or anything for between different VDC groups. Since it's IBGP, it follows a standard protocol. Great. I would, I would also add, this was all automatically orchestrated by the VCB where the BGP sessions done between the UDLR and the ESG were all automatically done. The weights were automatically set. Same goes for the IPs. And this is the benefit actually of having um, an orchestrator such as VCD uh, being there. Yeah, absolutely. And what I just did while you guys were talking is I added up my standby egress point uh, for Daniel. Um, and so we should now start seeing uh, that propagate to my A region A site as a new um, edge and uh, a new logical switch. All right, next up, we'll talk about creating stretch networks and uh, going through a few testing. Thanks. <laughs>